Thank you. Oh. Hello, Facebook family. Hello, Resurrection family. I'm going to give it a few minutes. I'm on a little late tonight, but we are here uh, for intercessory prayer. For those that want to tune in, please log in. Go to Resurrection Baptist Church's page. Let your friends know we're on. Uh, and we'll have a word from the Lord, and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. We pray that everything is good with you, that God has been faithful, that God has been good to you. Hello, Brother Burks. I bless you. Tell your son I said hello. Hello, Sister Sharon. God bless you. I'm glad you're healing better and feeling better. Uh, I know God had his hands in healing your body. Amen. A few more minutes, and we'll let a few more people pop in. I'm a little distant, so it's hard for me to see everything that's coming up, but... Uh, we have a word from the Lord. We just finished Bible study. It was a little late going over, but we had a great discussion. We're studying the, the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, and we're talking about uh, Samuel and, and when Saul got anointed to be king and why he was chosen and all of that. So, uh, And that's why tonight uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the worthiness. Reality is a lot of people feel uh, that they're not worthy to be used by God. They're not worthy even for God to take care of them or find favor in them because of stuff in their past, because of some stuff they've done, because of some sin they committed, because of some family member, because they've been locked up, because they, they did something that everybody else thought was egregious. And But the reality is God wants to use all of us. doesn't matter. You should never think yourself not worthy to be used by God. Amen. What was that you said earlier, Herb? Just because, just because you don't shine don't mean that you're not a diamond. Amen. God wants to use everybody in his ministry. So we want to talk about worthiness. And the thing about it, we're talking about, we're studying 1 Samuel. And in 1 Samuel, God, uh, uh, Saul tells Samuel, that he's not worthy because of his father, because of his family. The reality is some people think that you ain't worthy just because of your family background. Your daddy was incarcerated. Your daddy was a drunk. You might have been in the club. You might have been a drunk. And so other people will tell you that you're not worthy to be used by God. And so Samuel told Saul that God had chosen him to be the king. And the first thing Saul said is that I'm not worthy because of my family, because of my father. My father's no good. We don't have no money. We're not good enough to be used by God. But the reality is that God don't care about your past. God don't care about your family. God cares about you. And he cares about your faith, your walk, and your obedience to him and your, your, your uh, worship of him. It doesn't matter what, what you come from. And there's other people in the Bible that did the same thing. We taught Moses did the same thing. God said, Moses, I want you to lead my people out of Israel. Moses said, well, God, you got the wrong guy. I can't even talk good. I stutter. I can't keep a good sentence. Without, uh, 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 uh. You can't use me. And God said, don't worry about that. We're going to use your brother Aaron to talk for you, but you're going to be the leader of my people to take him out of Egypt. He went to Gideon. Gideon, I want you to fight my battle. I'm going to give you an army to fight for me. Gideon said, well, look, I've been hiding out in the mountains. I'm scared. And my family ain't no good. We're not worthy. We, 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 all we do is do wheat. And God said, I ain't worried about that. If I called you, then you know you're worthy. If I called you, you know I want to use you. And I want everybody that's watching tonight and may watch later. You're worthy to be used by God no matter what anybody else says. And, and we study tonight that once Saul anointed, once Samuel anointed Saul, and he took Saul to the people and told the people that Saul was going to be their king, a lot of people celebrated, but there's a lot of people, uh, and I forget the term they use, uh, what was the term they used? I'm going to look it up. He called him. He said, 
Oh, and I can't find it. Oh, they scorned him. There were some that scorned him because God was calling him. And they didn't think he was ready. They said, who is he to be used by God to be our king? We know where he came from. His daddy ain't no good. He don't have no money. How can God use him and choose him? People say the same thing about you when God anoints you. When God elevates you, when God lifts you up, people say the same thing about you when God gives you that special blessing. The, the reality is everybody not going to be happy when God gives you your anointing. Everybody not going to be happy when God gives you an elevation. Everybody not going to be happy when God says, I want you to be a deacon or I want you to preach the gospel. Everybody not going to be happy and they're going to bring up to you how you used to be. You can't listen to the naysayers. You can't listen to the people that don't believe in what God has already told you what he wants you to use you for. Amen. Because the reality is they want to be who you are. Hallelujah. Yeah, I said it. They want what God has given you. They want that special gift that God has placed in your life. They want that special anointing that God has poured over your head. They want the things that God is now opening the doors up in your life because they can't get it because they don't have the same faith. They don't have the same worship. God chose you for a reason. Let's look at what the scripture says. Luke 12, 6 and 7 says, and this is the English Standard Version, ESV, says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. 1 Samuel 16 and 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or not the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Reality is God not looking at what people say. He's not looking at how you look and how people look at you. He's looking at your heart. And I always say this, and I say this a hundred times, God go by what's on the inside, not by what people see on the outside. God knows your heart, and he knows if your heart is right, if your heart is good, he can be, you can be used by him. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, and we should walk in them. And 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In that verse, in 1 Peter, God is sharing with us who we are. We are part of the royal priesthood, a chosen race. You are part of the royal priesthood. You are chosen by God to be used by him that you can proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Don't ever think that you're not worthy to be used by God. Don't go by what people tell you who you are because God knows who you really are. People see what they are, what you are on the outside. They see what your family may be, but they don't know who you really are in the eyes of God. God wants you to use you, and he wants you to know tonight that you're worthy to be used as long as you worship him and have him in your heart. Amen. And Jeremiah 29 11, I've used this many times, says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God knows before you're born exactly what he wants to use you for. He knows before you are born exactly what your purpose is. Problem is, we don't always listen to his direction. We want to do it our way. We want to do it the way that we want to do it. And we don't listen to God's direction. A lot of mistakes are made because we simply don't listen to God. A lot of decisions that are bad are made because we don't listen to God. God speaks to all of us. We have to open up and build our relationship with him so we're able to listen and receive what God has for us in our heart. God wants to use us all. You're all worthy to be used by God. God has a plan and a purpose for you in your life. 
Don't ever put yourself down. Don't ever think that you're not good enough. Don't ever think that you're not worthy enough. Don't ever think that you don't know the Bible well enough. Don't ever think that you haven't studied enough. If he chooses you, it's because he will give you what you need to be used by him. Amen. Amen. I don't know the Bible by verse by verse. I can't recite you every verse of the Bible. Some people can, I can't. But I listen to what God feeds me and what God tells me and I listen to him and how he gives me my direction. And I make sure before I give you a word, I've studied that word so I know I'm not feeding you wrong. Amen. So I may not know Bible verse by verse, but I don't. And some people that tell you they do, you need to be careful of because they don't always practice what they preach. And they don't always live what they say they know. Y'all know the same people. They read the Bible, can quote you verse to verse, and they'll cuss you out next week. Those people you need to be careful of. I won't cuss you out, but I'll share the word when I can. Don't ever think you're not worthy. I at one time thought I wasn't worthy. I at one time thought that God, why you choose me to preach? And I ran from it. But God said, no, I got a plan for you. I want you to listen to me. And once I made that decision, God has fed me all along the way. God will feed you if you understand that he chose you because he already knows that you're worthy. Let us pray. The first person on my list my wife. I want you to pray for my wife. Amen. She deals with so much as being first lady. She gets so many calls. She gets as many calls as I do. Pray for her and her strength in the Lord that she make the right decisions, that she has the right words to say to other people, that the anointing continues to be on her. Amen. I want to pray for Sister Barbara Nix, and I want to pray for my good friends, the Sheriff's family. Johnny, Don, Deborah, Serena, Allen, Selena, Allen, I grew up with that family. I want you to pray for them. They lost their mother yesterday. Amen. I knew them as a child. I used to in their house almost every day. I've been fed by their mother, sat at their table. They're like family to me. I love their mother. I even seen her on the golf course many times playing golf. She was a good, good person who knew the Lord, who knew the Lord. And the family are people that know the Lord. Praying for the Sheer family in their loss. Praying that God give them strength in their bereavement. That God keep them lifted up. I want you to lift them up. When we pray tonight, I want you to lift them up in your prayers as we call on Jesus. Lady Deborah Booz. I want you to pray for Deborah Booz. She's sick. She needs your prayers to give her recoveries. To God recover her, to touch her body, to help her heal from her illness. I'm not going to say what she's going through, but I want you to know she's going through something and she needs your prayers. She not, she's just like us. She might be a first lady, but first ladies need prayer. She's just like us. She needs God's healing hand. We ask God to touch her tonight. And when we pray, I want you to lift her up in your prayers. Pray for Deacon Cardell Manor. God bless you for watching tonight. We ask that God continue to bless you and touch your body. Uh, Charles and LaVon Williams, Ted Patton Jr., uh, Rena in Chicago, Juanita Madison, Rosemond Lee, Gwen Jones, Teresa Brown, Sharon Lee, continue with your healing. God, continue to bless your body, touch your body. Pastor Shanks, uh, Felix Campbell, Rick Zickerfus, Cousin Kevin in Flint, Michigan, Shirley Thompson's daughter, Renita Taylor, Mother Aline Harris, Helen Bird, Jimmy Williams, Kath Kathy Cornett, Deacon Herb Fowers, Elaine Brander, Diane Hunter, Eddie and Ruben Burks, Tyrone Patrick, Corliss Crowder, Bonda Hyder, Cheryl Wilson, Deacon Eddie Nash, Pastor Strong and his brother, Natasha Kelly, Deacon James and Isla Buckingham, Janetta Smith, Sister Shirley McCaster, my mom, continue to lift her up. Marilyn Loma, Sharon Hall, Alicia Davis, Donnell Moody, Charlotte Robinson, Mother Mays, all the mothers of this church, Mother Ingram, uh, Mother Harris, Mother Glover, Mother Thompson, Marsha Madison, Lee Madison, Todd Madison, O.C. Ballard, Sonny Edwards, Gilbert Young, Joe Simmons, uh, Paula Hicks Hudson, Tamika Buckingham, Cheryl Perry, Tariva Taylor, Dashi, Jaden, Kimberly Rochelle, Brenda McFall and family, Jennifer Close, Re Debbie Ramsey, Reverend Earl and Wanda Buckingham, Lorenza Buckingham, Cousin Diane, Susie Wycliffe, Deacon Archie Lewis and family, Deacon Charles and Deborah Gibbon, Reverend Walton, 
Corrine Wheeler, Henrietta Taylor, Aunt Molly, Raymond Corrigan, Nate Amartha, Willis, Hazel Bester, Dwayne Hammond, Denisa Boyd, Sister Lucinda Sharp, Carmen Morgan, Bruce Watson, Violet Terry, the Thompson family, Dana and Marcus Pickett, Denise Perky, Jody Lambert, Solis, uh, Pastor Bill Russell, his wife Deborah, his her mom, uh, James Dickerson, Keisha Bowen, uh, cousin Dorothy Brewer in Kentucky, my children, my grandchildren, TJ, Tish, the children, Marvin, Faith, Armani, Doris and Terry Neal, Robert and he Heidi Marshall, Tanya Smith, Tequila Church, Patricia Gary. Those are the list. If I miss somebody, if you know somebody, text me, inbox me, let me know their name, and we will add them. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we're here tonight, God, because we know that there's some that need your touch, there are some that need your spirit, there are some that, Father, need you to give them comfort. I ask right now that you pray for the Share family. Not only did I know them, mother, I knew all of them. I know all of them, oh God. I ask that you go to wherever they are. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Give them comfort on every leaning side. Speak into their spirit, oh God, right now. Let them know that you know all about their situation. That you know all about their problem. That their mother now is in your hands. That you're already taking good care of her. That you can give them comfort that they can't find any place else. That you touch them, Father, with your special anointing, that they can have their grieving process go through it, God, with you by their side. Touch, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that, Father, that you know all about the situations, that you know all about the problems, that you know what we need tonight. We ask, Father, that you move on their behalf, that you lift them up in your name. We know that there's nobody like you, God. There's nobody that can do what you can do. All the names on my list, God, that you reach out today. All the names on my list, God, that you speak in their spirit today. All the names on my list, God, that you go to the room right now. All the names on my list, God, touch Deacon Mallard right now. Touch Sister Shanks right now. Pastor Shanks right now. Touch Sister Lee right now. Sister Brown right now. Lift them up in your name, oh God. And I know that you had all power that you can heal the land. Yes, that you touch Sister Lady Booze right now. Touch her in the hospital room right now today, God. I know she knows all about you. I know she's already called on your name. I know, God, she's already reached out to you. I know, God, the pastor, Pastor Booze, has already proclaimed victory in your name. We ask right now, God, that you lift her up. We ask right now, God, that you touch her body. We ask right now that you touch Sister Lee's body. You touch Deacon Mallard's body. Father, you touch them in a way that only you can. I know, God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you already gone to the bedside. That you're already gone to with your healing power. That you're already dispatched your angels. You're already seeing to the needs. You're already moving on their behalf. You're already opening doors. You're already, God, showing them who you really are. We ask, God, that you send your Holy Spirit. Those that call on your name. You send your Holy Spirit to those that are reaching out to you, God. And as they reach out to you, God, we ask that you reach out to them. You send them your Holy hand. That you surround them with your love. Yeah. That you hold them in the hollow of your hand. Right now. That you lift them up, Father, and hold them in your arms. Yeah. That you rock them all night long. Yeah. And let them know that everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Wave your hand tonight, God, and say, peace be still. Yeah. Wave your hand tonight, God, and heal bodies. Wave your hand tonight, God, and give them peace on the inside. Wave their hand tonight, God, and let them know that you're already there. Thank you, Lord. That you're already making a way. Thank you, Lord. That you're already opening the doors. And that you already heard their cry. Thank that you pity their every groan. Hallelujah. And you're moving on their behalf. We ask that you do it tonight, God, in a special way. That you send your special anointing, Father, to those that need you. That you don't let their words and their prayers go undone. We ask that they reach you tonight, God. That you hear every voice. And that you react and you act. 
not tomorrow, but right now. Let them know that you are true and living God and that you're still alive and that you can still take care of their every need. Amen. Do it tonight, God. And Father, I promise you when you move, they will proclaim your name Amen. and tell the world just how great you are. They will praise your name, O oh God, and give you glory. Thank you, Lord. And let them know the victory is all in your hands. Do it tonight, God. In the way that you've already done. And that you already do. In Jesus' name. We claim the victory tonight. In Jesus' name. Because we know that he's our advocate. In Jesus' name. Because his power, your power, comes through him. In Jesus' name. We pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. And thank God. I thank you for praying with me tonight. I thank God for the names that we called out tonight. I thank God that he's going to give the victory and give peace of mind and move and move on all of our behalves. Just like you, I need prayer. Just like you, I need God. Just like you, I need God to intercede and intervene with things in my life. I don't take anything for granted. And don't you take anything for granted. Know that God still has the victory and he still has power to do what you need. He's done it before, he'll do it again. Yes, sir. He spoke to you before, he'll do it again. Let us all claim the victory in his name tonight. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We have a word this Sunday. We pray that you tune in Sunday at 11 o'clock. Amen to our broadcast. If you know somebody tonight that needs to hear this prayer, if you know somebody tonight that's feeling depressed and unworthy of God, share this video so you can be a witness to them and lift them up out of their depression, lift them up out of whatever they're feeling tonight and allow them to get the same victory that God has already given to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. As we lift up the name of Jesus, tune in Sunday, 11 o'clock, and we'll praise God together in worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.